Welcome to EPG Path Shala. I am Dr. Neeru Tandon from Department of English, VSSG College, Kanpur. We are discussing paper number 13 and this module number 3 has been written by me. The topic is the level and scope of linguistics. Whenever we talk about level and scope of linguistics, we are very sure that these level and scopes of linguistics are essential to understand if we want to understand the structure of the language in particular. In this module, we will learn how the language develops, what are the various fields and subfields of language, how its structure takes place. The first thing comes in the mind, who is a linguist? And when we say a person who is aware of the minute details of language, some people misunderstand that a person who knows many languages is a linguist. No, there is a difference between a polyglot and a linguist. A person who knows many languages is known as polyglot. But when we talk about a linguist, he may or may not be knowing many languages. Actually, what he is doing is that he is just finding the structure of a language not only a particular language but language about human language in its very core form uh, if i want to define it you can understand that knowing a language and knowing about a language they are two different things a linguist works knowing about a language not knowing a language is essential for him. To make it more clear, I can give you an example that when you know about the car, what are various parts, how do we start it, where is the brake, where is uh, other uh, components and the second thing is how to drive a car you know how to drive a car. These are two different things. Knowing about the car and knowing how to drive that car in a practical way, in the same way we can say that knowing about a language and knowing a language, they are two different things. When we learn how to drive a car, we learn a set of habits and do some practice. This is similar to learning how to speak a language. When we learn how the car works, we open up its mechanism, study it and investigate the relationship of its parts to one another. This is similar to what we do in a scientific study of language or linguistics. We investigate the mechanism of language, its parts and how all these parts fit together to perform particular functions and why they are arranged or organized in a certain manner only. Just as while driving a car, we are using its various components, while speaking a language, we are using the sounds, words, etc. of that language. Behind these uses is the mechanism which enables us to do so. In this diagram, you can see that we have object of study and the name of field and the size of unit. We have got the smallest as well as the largest unit. So this is called bottom of approach to linguistic analysis. We know that the smallest unit is phonetics and that is related with all human sounds. And the largest size of unit is pragmatics that is of language use. So there comes phonetics that is all human sounds, phonology, classical sounds, morphology that deals with words and forms, syntax, sentences, clauses, semantics that deals with meaning and finally pragmatics that is of language use or of discourse. 
Linguistics can be understood as a science in both general and specific terms. We all agree that linguistic is a scientific study of language, but what kind of science it is? Is it natural? It is social? It is psychological? What kind of study we do to understand it in a better way? In the same way as a physicist or chemist takes materials and measures their weights, densities, etc. to determine their nature, the linguist studies the components of language, observing the occurrence of speech sounds or the way in which words begin or end. Language, like other phenomena, is objective because it is observable with the senses. It can be heard with the ear. It can be seen when the vocal organs are in movement or when reading words on a page. You can see when I am speaking somewhere I am just uh, making round lips. Somewhere I am speaking with a tongue upwards. The tongue is going downwards. So various movements of the mouth organ it is just responsible for producing various sounds that we will discuss in later modules. So linguist is rightly termed both as an empirical scientist and as a social scientist. In fact, it is a human discipline since it is concerned with human language. So it is part of the study of humanities as well. This includes the study of literature, appreciation of the beauty and music of poetry. In understanding language, humankind can understand itself. So language study is so very important. Moreover, since every branch of knowledge uses language. So linguistics is central to all other area of knowledge. Suppose if we want to study sociology. Is it possible without knowing the language? We are studying psychology. How can we study a psychology when we don't know the particular language? So language or the study of language is central and all other things are around this language, surrounded or language surrounds everything. So it is central and it is important to deal with language in particular. Single sounds or phonemes combine together to make larger unit of sounds. These combine into a larger meaningful unit called a morpheme. Morphemes combine to form words and words combine to form sentences and several sentences combine to interconnect to make a unified piece of a speech or writing which we call a text or discourse. Now you see at each stage there are certain rules that operate. I say very normally that various words are there to make a phrase or various phrases are there to make a sentence or various sentences are there to make a meaningful discourse. But how? How to do that? It depends and varies from language to language, from area to area, from dialect to dialect. Pronunciation is different according to the region. So according to the language, it changes code switching, code mixing, that is we'll discuss later on. So all these things have got a mechanism. We can say that rule of phonology determine the occurrence and combination of particular phoneme. Rules of word formation cover the behavior of particular morphemes. Rules of sentence formation determine the combination and positioning of words in a sentence. In considering the levels of language, we also consider the role of phonetics and phonology. Phonetics studies language at the level of sounds, how sounds are articulated by the human speech mechanism and received by the auditory mechanism, how sounds can be distinguished and characterized by the manner in which they are produced. While phonology studies the combination of sounds into organized unit of speech, the formation of syllables and larger units. We also have morphology. 
that studies the pattern of formation of words by the combination of sounds into minimal distinctive units of meaning called morphemes. Words can be made up of single morphemes such as bat or combinations of morphemes like bats which is made up of two morphemes bat plus s. Morphology deals with the rules of combination of morphemes to form words. For bats we cannot say b a t e s. No, we will say b a t s. There are certain rules. Why to just add s and not e s? So those rules are being studied. It studies the changes that take place in the structure of words like the morpheme take changes to took and taken. These changes signify a change in tense and resulting in understanding the language in a better and a proper way. When it is took, we understand that something had already happened. Take, took, taken signify the various ranges, various time, various position of the word happen. Syntax is the level at which we study how words combine to form phrases. Phrases combine to form clauses and clauses join to make sentences. Syntax also attempts to describe how these elements function in the sentence. For example, what is their role in the sentence? For example, again, the word boy is a noun. However, in each of the following sentences, it functions in a different role. We can say the boy like a ball. Then we can say the lady loved the boy. In the same way, we can say the girl likes dolls or the old man loved the girl. So in sentence A, the girl likes dolls. It functions as the subject of the sentence. The girl is here subject. In sentence 2, the old man loved the girl. The same word girl functions as the object. So it depends upon the positioning of the words in a sentence, how we place that particular word. Then only we can determine its value, its meaning and its position in a particular sentence. We also know about semantics that is related with meaning, how the meaning will be deciphered, how the meaning will be determined. It deals with the levels of meaning in a sentence in a language. It attempts to analyze the structure of meaning, how words similar or different are related, how to show their interrelationship through forming categories. Then we have pragmatics that deals with the contextual aspect of meaning in particular situation. As distinct from the study of sentences, pragmatics consider utterances those sentences that are actually uttered by speakers of a language. Suppose if the context is different, the language, the word is same, the sentence is same, but the meaning will be different. Suppose if I want to say someone, you have come very late and I say in a different words, Oh, you have arrived so early. It may be in a different sense. It depends on the context. It may be if I am using irony, then I will say the person who has come very late. Oh, you have arrived so early. It means I am using irony, but whatever I am saying, I mean just the opposite of that. So it depends upon the context what will be the meaning of that particular utterance. Discourse is the final level where we study the chunks of language that are bigger than a single sentence. We analyze intersentinel links that form a connected or cohesive text. 
Cohesion is the relation established in a sentence between it and the sentences preceding and following it by the use of connectives such as and, though, also, but, etc. By studying the elements of cohesion, we can understand how a piece of connected language can have greater meaning that is more than the sum of the individual sentences it contains. We can think that that is all, but it's not so. There are certain more factors to be discussed and one of them is graphology. What is graphology? Graphology, we can say, is the study of the writing system of a language and the conventions used in representing speech in writing that is the formation of letters. We all know that language is a mixture of LSRW listening, speaking, reading and writing all the four parts are very very important. So when that is spoken language comes in the written form it needs certain symbols and those symbols vary language to language. So in the written form when we write those signals the study of that is known as graphology. We also have lexicology that studies the manner in which lexical items that is words of course in simple terms are grouped together as in the compilation of dictionaries. After considering these levels of linguistics let us also talk about scope of linguistics. When we deal with the scope of linguistics on the major uh, broader category, we can just divide that into two that is micro and macro. Micro linguistic and macro linguistics, they have different components in themselves. Let us discuss them rapidly. Linguistics differ according to what they consider as included in the scope of linguistic studies. Some consider the proper area of linguistics to be confined to the levels of phonology, morphology and syntax. This can be called a micro-linguistic perspective. However, some take a broader or macro-linguistic view that includes the other levels of analysis mentioned above as well as other aspects of language and its relationship with many areas of human activity. So, the main concern of modern linguistics is to describe language, to study its nature and to establish a theory of language. In modern linguistics, the activity of describing the language system is the most important and so modern linguistics is generally known as descriptive. But linguistics has other concerns as well, which fall within its scope and these include historical and comparative study of language. When we discuss the scope of linguistics, naturally we discuss various branches of linguistics. A scope is none other than various branches because it just uh, comes in the form of various branches. Just like we have sociolinguistics, we have applied linguistics, we have psycholinguistics, we have neurolinguistics. So one by one, very briefly, we'll just discuss these branches. But before that, I would like to quote what Pitt Corder writes. I quote, whether it is a speech therapy, psychiatry, literary criticism, translation, what all these fields of application have in common is the necessity for description of the various languages involved. Somewhere, what he is doing in this particular definition or particular writing that he is telling you the various scope of linguistics, how and why we can use this particular field study of languages for various other purposes. Of course, we know language, of course, we study language, but we use language not only to communicate, we use language for therapeutic purpose only. We need language to understand the mind of the other human beings. We need language to communicate, we need language to understand. So there are various scopes just can be better understood by various branches of linguistics. 
First of all is psycholinguistics. Psycholinguistics studies these mental processes, processes of thought and concept formation and their articulation in language which reveal a great deal about the structures of human psychology as well as of language. Psycholinguistics also studies the influence of psychological factors such as intelligence, motivation, anxiety on the kind of language that is understood and produced. We all know that language differs person to person as well. A person who is scared and a person who is motivated, their language, though they know the same language, but the utterance will be entirely different. So if anxiety is there, then the utterance, the words used, they will be altogether different. So this is the area where psycholinguist works. Psycholinguist also works on the kind of like mental disability. For example, that results in the mistakes made by children in reading when they mistake one letter for another and this disease is known as dyslexia. Psycholinguistics can offer some insights and corrective measures for this condition. Connected field is neurolinguistics. One specialized area within psycholinguistics that studies the psychological basis of language and language disorders such as loss of memory, etc. Neurolinguistics studies the relation of language and communication to different aspects of brain function. For example, it tries to explore how the brain understands and produces language and communication. We cannot just ignore a major field, major area, major scope that is sociolinguistics. Sociolinguistics has a deep study. Why? Society to society language varies. Why the same language has various dialects? When the area changes, the tone changes, the intonation changes, the words are same but the pronunciation changes. All these things are different and this difference is being studied by sociolinguistics. This branch of linguistics deals with the exploration of the relation between language and society. It is based on the fact that language is not a single homogeneous entity but has different forms in different situations. The changes in language occur because of changes in social conditions. For example, social class, gender, regional and cultural groups. A particular social group may speak a different variety of a language from the rest of the community. Just to name a few scope of applied linguistics. Language teaching and learning, language testing, psycho and neurolinguistics, sociolinguistic, discourse analysis, computational linguistics, and translation studies. After discussing this applied linguistics, there are certain uh, other terms to be discussed in detail uh, that are comparatively modern areas, modern scope of linguistics. One is computational linguistics. What is it? Of course, it is related with computers and who studies it and why. Computational linguistics is the scientific and engineering discipline concerned with understanding written and spoken language from a computational perspective and building artifacts that usefully process and produce language either in bulk or in a dialogue setting. To the extent that language is a mirror of mind, a computational understanding of language also provides insight into thinking and intelligence. And since language is our most natural and most versatile means of communication, linguistically competent computers would greatly facilitate our interaction with machines and software of all sorts and put at our fingertips in ways that truly meet our needs the vast textual and other resources of the internet. In the same way, cognitive linguistics grew out of the work of a number of researchers, 
active in the 1970s who were interested in the relation of language and mind and who did not follow the prevailing tendency to explain linguistic patterns by means of appeals to structural properties internal to and specific to language. The most influential linguists working along these lines and focusing centrally on cognitive principles and organization were Wallace, Charles Fillmore, George Lekoff, Ronald and Leonor Talmay. Each of these linguists began developing their own approach to language description and linguistic theory centered on a particular set of phenomena and concerns. So, to summarize, we can say that whenever we deal with the level and scope of linguistics, we understand first the micro level and macro level of linguistics. What are the various factors that come in the micro level or the macro level? When we discuss the scope of linguistics, we deal with various branches of linguistics, psycholinguistics, sociolinguistics, neurolinguistics, applied linguistics, and then understand which part is being studied by whom in what context. And in this way, it is better understanding it creates a better understanding and we come to know about the language and the study of language scientific study of language known as linguistics in a better way thank you for visiting epg patshala